So one of the fuels that I expect that you will use is ethanol. Here are some values. The mass loss of the spirit burner was 3.7 grams. So most of you will, I'm assuming, carry out this experiment with some little spirit burners um, that will contain the alcohol in them and will have a wick that you can light and therefore burn uh, that fuel in order to produce energy and heat the water. You'll obviously, very importantly, need to measure the mass of the burner uh, mass before and the mass after. And therefore, the mass before minus the mass after gives us the change in mass. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you will get a value of mass here. And the temptation is to put it into the MCAT formula. And we need to be very careful that we don't do that. So our first step, we're going to make sure is really clear that this is about the water and nothing else. For this value to be about the water, we need to make sure that we have a value for mass which if we're heating 100 grams, that's what's going to go there. And I'm going to put 100 because I'm going to use my Q value of 4.18. I'll get exactly the same value if I change that to 0 0.1 kilograms and multiply it by 4.18 times 10 to the 3 for kilograms. But the numbers will be the same. And then I'm going to multiply that by the um, delta T, which in this case you can see was a temperature rise for the water of 54 degrees. Now, of course, I've put it here in degrees C, and you'll also find that the uh, temperature unit that you're given usually is in uh, Kelvin. Now, of course, you can convert the initial and final temperatures into temperatures in Kelvin. But the one thing that we do know is that the Kelvin scale and the Celsius scale both move in equal steps. So therefore, if we're talking about a change in temperature, then a 54 degree, cha uh, 54 degree C change in temperature is going to be equal to 54 Kelvin. The absolute values will be different, but the change will not. So once we have the change in temperature in a degree C, we can easily just convert that into Kelvin. And so that will go into our equation. And when we put those values into our equation, we'll get a certain number. Just to recap on that, the calculation, we had our mass, which was 100. We multiplied that by 4.18, which was our specific heat, and then by 54. And when we do that, we get a number of um, 2, 2, 5, 7, 2 joules. Now, I've, I've run straight to the delta H value here. One of the things that we, we do need to realize is that when we're talking about delta H and not the Q value, that we're actually going to have a negative value. This is an exothermic reaction. The heat's actually been absorbed by the water, so the heat's gone into the water, and it, therefore it's gone out from the reaction, the combustion reaction that's occurred. So this is actually a negative value for the delta H because it's an exothermic reaction. Now, at this stage, it's probably reasonable for you to start to express your number as uh, kilojoules because these numbers do tend to get quite large and so more than reasonable for you to convert that number into kilojoules. But, and this is the important but, this is where we need to take into account how long we were burning the fuel. So, obviously, this number could be any number and is almost a meaningless number if we don't identify exactly how much fuel was burnt in order to have the temperature uh, of 100 uh, mils of water to rise by 54 degrees. Now, we know when that happened that we used 3.7 grams of fuel. So what we need to be aware of the fact is that if we standardize this, we can actually get the um, value of the energy generated uh, per gram of fuel. So the simple way to do that is to take 22.572 and divide that by 3.7. And when we do that, we get a value of, uh, of course, it's still a negative, so minus 6.2 kilojoules per gram. Now again, now this is this is a useful unit because it now allows us to compare the amount of energy that's being released in the combustion of different alcohols. We can compare each one 
per gram. So if we have a gram of each of these fuels and we were to, to uh, combust one gram of those fuels, what are the different amounts of energy that we could get? But being chemists, grams isn't the term, that uh, isn't the unit that we usually use when we're making comparisons between different types of compounds. The better one and the more common one that we choose is the mole.